you all welcome back to b2e section of program i dr susmita mahapatra is here to take the module 2 of microwave and antennas now we have already completed seven classes now let us start with our eighth class so in eighth class we will be discussing regarding one more microwave passive device that is web guide keys and hybrid keys so let us see what is one web guide key first now web guide keys are usually three port components and mainly it is used to connect a branch or section of the web guide in series or parallel with the main web guide or transmission line for providing the splitting or combining of a power now if i will show you what is one web guide key so as i discussed the definition you can see this is one web guide key so here we have a main web guide section and we have a branch section so this together when they are joined together we get a join here and it is in the form of a t junction so this is just a web guide key now why we use it either the power given in one port is getting Plated in these two ports, or if we have input at both the ports, they are going to be added, and that is going to be taken in the third port. So either it can add the power or it can split the power. Now there are different types of web guide keys according to the construction. They are going to be different, and as they are going to be different with respect to construction, so obviously how the power is getting added or subtracted, that is the characteristics. of this t junction is also going to change so we have different types of web guide t junctions according to their characteristics now basically uh, we have some major web guide t junctions as h type so which is also known as a shunt type i'll explain you why it is a shunt type and a e type t junction which is also known as a series t junction and magic t which is usually a combination of e type and h type t and we have got hybrid ring web guide junction so coming first to what is one web guide t as i explained you now so basically we have here a main guide a main web guide and a branch web guide junction so this if we are considering as the main web guide so we have a branch line which is giving us a t junction so that is why it is a web guide key. now coming to the first type of web guide key that we are going to discuss this is our e type web guide so if you we'll see in this structure so this is my e type web guide key. you can see uh, i am showing you the e type web guide so what we have here basically it is the main web guide and this is the branched web guide section that we have and here the ports are named as 1 2 and 3 we have three ports here 1 2 and 3 okay now let us see what are the characteristics or how it is going to work so basically it is called a t junction because the junction arm or the top t extends from main web guide so t extends from the main web guide in same direction as e field so usually if we we'll see the e field so electric field since this is the web guide path or this is the direction of propagation of wave wave propagates like this so the electric field usually we take it in this direction and the magnetic field of the electromagnetic wave we take it in this direction so that is the electric and magnetic field has to be perpendicular with respect to the direction of propagation so if this is the direction of propagation then electric fields are like this and the magnetic fields are like this so in this section what we can see that the t extends from the main web guide in same direction as electric field the electric field is in like this and the t junction also in the same direction as the electric Now it is characterized by the fact that the output of this form of web guide junction are one eighty degree out of phase with each other. So if I am taking this is my main web guide junction, so what I mean to tell is the output coming at this main web guide two ports. If I am taking two ends, 
then the wave coming out from here and here they are out of phase so we'll see how they are going to be out of phase so this basic construction is just one wave guide junction t junction where i have this is my main wave guide and this is my branched wave guide which is this direction this t junction is perpend is parallel with respect to the electric field okay now as i told the wave or the electric field appearing at two ends of the main wave guide junction are 180 degree out of phase what happens here you can see in the structure we have tried to show you that here if we'll see this if i'm taking as port one so this if it is port one and the same if i'm taking it as port two so the electric fields here and here they are out of phase so you can see that they are out of phase of course they are perpendicular or uh, with respect to the wave propagation direction in the main line main wave guide junction but they are out of phase and this electric fields when they are coming towards the junction you can see they get like this so when i add both of them near the junction they cancel each other and the resultant electric field becomes zero almost it becomes zero okay so this leads to the characteristics of electric field in one e type waveguide structure that is it can be seen that the electric field uh, that when it approaches the t junction itself the electric field lines becomes distorted you can see they are getting bent when they are approaching the junction okay so this is my junction area so you can see here the electric lines are getting little bit getting distorted and after that what happens when they split so that the positive end of lines remains with the top side of right hand side as you can see the positive lines remain top end with the right hand side and left hand side it becomes downward okay the electric field becomes downward and that is we can tell it is associated with a negative field now in this way the signals appearing at either section of the t are out of phase so here the either section with respect to the t if you see this side and this side they are out of phase okay so when they are out of phase what we can tell that in other words if a wave is incident at port 3 so let me take it as port 1 port 2 and this is at port 3 so if i am giving it input at port 3 and i am taking the output at port 1 or output at port 2 they are going to be equal in magnitude but they are going to be out of pitch okay so if you give the input at 3 take the output at 1 or take the output at 2 they are going to be equal in magnitude but out of phase so for that we are writing the s parameter as s13 is equal to minus s23 okay so that is we are giving the input at 3 and taking the output at 1 and 2 they are out of phase but equal in magnitude similarly if i am giving one input at 1 okay port 1 i am giving here the input and i am taking the output at 3 or I'm giving the same input at port 2 and I'm taking the output at port 3, they are going to be equal in magnitude but opposite in phase. So that is why we have written S31, give it at 1 and take it at 3. So this is port 1, give it at 1, take it out at 3 or give it at 2 and take it out at 3. They are also going to be equal in magnitude but out of phase. So to show that, we have written here that s31 is equal to minus s32 okay now coming to the next characteristics so a wave incident at one gives same output at port t as the output when we are giving at getting at port one when the wave is incident at port t so what i want to tell is my one and three ports are symmetrical in nature so that is you give the input at one take the output at three or you give the input at three take the output at one they are going to be same similarly give an input at port two 
take the output at three or give the input at four, three, take the output at two, they are also going to be same. So I can tell that these two ports, one and three, they are symmetric with each other. And similarly, port two and three, they are also symmetric with each other. Okay. And as we can see, one more is port one and two. So let us find what is the relationship between them. Now, if a wave is incident at port one and whatever the output it gives at port two, if I'm incidenting the same wave at port two and I'm taking the output at port one, they are going to be sent. So port one and two are again going to be symmetric with each other or they are going to have a reciprocal relationship. Rather, we can tell they're going to have a reciprocal relationship, okay? So that means S12 is equal to S21. So finally, what we have, if two, if two in phase inputs waves are given at port one and port two, and finally we are taking the output at three. So since both these inputs will be equal in magnitude, but out of phase, when they are coming to the junction, they will become out of phase. So the output coming at port three is going to be zero. So this arm is basically this port or this arm is known as one subtractive port or subtractive arm. Okay. Now, other thing is, if you check each of the port here, each of the port, now they may not be a matched terminated. So they are not, they may not be matched terminated. That is, uh, we may not have, uh, we may have a reflection. So if I'm giving an input at port one, it can give me a reflection at port one. Similarly, if I'm giving my input at port two, I can have a reflection at port two. Three also I can have, okay? Sometimes I can have a reflection. So I cannot tell all these ports are matched. Now taking all these things into consideration, let us write the S matrix for this E plane. So initially as we have three ports, so this S matrix is going to be a three cross three matrix. So we have three rows, three columns. So let us write the S matrix first, S11, S12, S13, okay, that is my first row, S21, S22, S23, and then S31, S32, and S33. Now, let us try to change this S matrix according to the characteristics that we just now discussed. Okay, so yeah, so what we have here, first thing we told, we, one characteristics, we, so usually while doing, changing the characteristics or minimizing the S matrix, when we try to use less number of S elements in the S matrix, so we don't try to change the first row. We usually try to keep the first row S elements as it is. And we try to apply the characteristics of the device and change the elements in the other rows and other columns. Okay, so without touching this, the first row, let us keep it as it is and go for the next row. Now what we had according to the symmetry property, I told that Whenever we give the input at one and take the output at two and give the input at two and take the output at one, they are going to be same. Now applying this, we can change here the S21, we can make it to S12. Okay. And in certain cases, my S11 can be proved to S22. So maximum we can change this s22 also to s11 now coming for s23 and s32 already we have discussed that part also so s23 s23 is equal to s32 so going further so we can make the changes so s23 is uh, let it be here so s32 can be changed again to s23 okay then one more relationship also we have got here that is S13 is equal to S31. 
so going according to this relationship let us make our s31 is equal to this one let us change it as s13 right then let us see what else formula or what else relationship we have we have got s13 equal to minus s23 and s31 equal to minus s32 so i can write in place of s23 it is equal to minus s13 and wherever i have minus s32 i can write it as minus uh, sorry wherever i have s32 i can change it to minus s31 so let us go back and change our s23 to minus s13 so here we have got s23 so s23 can be changed further to minus s13 and similarly here we have got s23 so that again can be changed to minus s13 so taking all these characteristics what can be our s matrix the final s matrix for e plenty s11 s12 s13 and here again s21 is changed to s12 s22 can be changed to s11 and s23 has been changed to minus s13 and then we have got s31 can be changed to s13 and s32 it's double changed and finally it has come to minus s13 and s33 okay so this is the final s matrix for our e plan similarly now let us go for our h plan t let us go for the h plan t when this h plan t we can see that this is the construction is little different here and here what you can see this is the main web guide this is the main web guide and this is the section which is giving us the t junction and this t junction in the e plane t and h plane t i am showing you simultaneously so if we see here the e plane t was parallel to the electric field here the h plane uh, here this t junction is parallel to the magnetic field now if the wave is propagating in this direction the electric field is taken in this direction and the magnetic field is taken in this direction so this at the this t junction the branch line we have it is parallel to the magnetic field that is why this is also known as h plane t in e plane t the branch was parallel to electric field here the branch is the side branch is parallel to the magnetic field that is why it is known as a h plane t Now coming for its characteristics, so this, as I told you, the this type of web gate junction is called H drive T junction because the long axis of the main top of the T arm is parallel to the magnetic field. So that is what I explained. Now, if we see the electric field directions here, or uh, if we consider the uh, direction or how the electric fields are going to appear here. So if we see whatever the fields we appear at port one. So if I am taking this as port one, this one as port two, and this one as port three. So here the direction of electric field both across this port one and port two are going to be same. Okay. So they are either outward or they are inward. They are same. so coming to the junction when i come to this junction this electric fields are getting added so when i take out at this port this two electric fields are getting added and then we are getting the output okay so the electric field at port 1 and port 2 they are in phase and they are additive when they come to this branch line the side line the t line okay now that is what is written here the electric field lines are uh, either they can they are shown as cross here because they are in same direction and it can be seen that the signals at all ports are in phase so it is easiest to consider signals entering from lower section of t 
in uh, any port can actually be used for phase relations and preserved whatever entry port is used. So you can use any port for the entry of the wave. Now, if two in phase input waves are fed at port one and port two, the output at port three will be in phase and additive. As I told you here, the electric field in port one and port two, they are in phase. So when we pick it out at port three, they are going to be additive in nature and they are also in phase. So we can tell that the port three is a sum arm. The two waves are getting added here. So it is a sum arm. Now, or additive, additive arm, okay? Thus, if we give an input at port three, it's getting divided at one and two equally. So give the input at port three and take the output at port two or port one, it is going to be same. So that is why we have written S12, S13 equal to S23. Other than that, it is going to have the same relationship as E plenty. That is our S12 is going to be S21, the reciprocal relationship. And the port and each of the port may be matched, may not be matched. So we cannot consider that they are perfectly matched. And anyway, we can show that our S11 is equal to S22. If we consider either port one, or port two, the incident as well as the reflected at any one port by match terminating the other port. So this is a match terminator. When we find out the characteristic, usually the other port we have to match terminate. And wherever we want to take the relationship, we have to give the input there and there only we have to take the output in order to find the S parameter, okay? Now, in this case also, the S11 can be proved to S22. So, Coming for the S matrix, so similarly as if this is also one three cross three matrix. So um, uh, this is also a three port divide. So we can put it into a three cross three matrix. Okay, so let us do that. Uh, let us find out the final S matrix also. So here also we can write the S matrix as S one one, S12, S13, and S21, S22, S23, S31, S32, and S33. Now, coming for the characteristics, as I told, the first row we want to retain and we want to change the other characteristics, other uh, parameters if possible, according to the characteristics of the device. So let us do that. So we know S21 is equal to S12. So quickly we can change S21 to S, uh, S21 to S12. S22 can be written as S11, we can change it. And S23 here in this case, our S23 is going to be, so you give it at port two, take it out at port three, or give it at port one, take it out at port three, they are going to be same, okay? They are not going to be out of phase also, so we can write it as S13. Similarly, S31, give it at port three and take it out at port one, or give it at port one, take it out at port three, they are going to be same, that is S13 is equal to S31. So S31 can be changed to S13. Similarly, S32 can be changed to S23. Again, further S23 can be changed to S13. So taking all these considerations, the S matrix can be written as S11, S12, S13, and here S21 can be written as S12, S22 can be written as S11 and S23 can be written as S13. Similarly, S31 can be written as S13 and S32 can be written as finally S13 and S33. So this is our H plenty and this is the S matrix for H plenty representation. Coming for 
the next one is the hybrid or magic tea now why it is called a hybrid tea because it is a mixture of e plant tea and h plant tea this is a mixture of e plant tea and h plant tea as you can see here this side if i see i have my pot one two and the e plant tea the e plant so this is my e plant tea and this is if i see in this way so holding my pot one and two and this the branch line so if i'll hold in this way if you can see so this is my h plant now since it is a combination of e plant and h plant together so this is known as a hybrid tea which is also known as a magic tea now since it is a combination of e plant tea and h plant tea so it is going to have the relationship or characteristics which is a combination of e plant tea and h plant tea now let us take this pot as pot 1 this pot as pot 2 this pot as my e plant arm as pot 3 and this pot the front pot as my pot 4 which is my h plant arm okay now So it is a combination of e and h so usually this has got a uh, application in most of the mixer because we can use it for subtracting the signals when it is working as one e plant t it will usually subtract the signals and when it is working as one h plant t it will help in adding the signals so in most of the receivers in the mixer section we can use this magic tea whenever we are using some microwave signal now let us see how the characteristics varies so as we will con consider the e plant tea we know when we consider the e plant tea something like this so when you give at port 1 and port 2 the output at port 3 is going to be zero because the port 1 and port 2 inputs are out of phase or if you are giving at port 3 the output coming at 1 and 2 are out of phase with respect to each other okay so this leads to one more relationship that the output when you give at Three and you take it at one and two. They are out of phase, and the final output coming at port four is equal to zero. So we can write it as S one three is equal to minus S two three, and S four three. So that is you give it at three, take it out at four. That is equal to zero. similarly with respect to the h plane we have a relationship is that when you give the input at h plane that is at port port and you take the output at 1 or 2 so since it is a h plane so since it is only the h plane characteristics when we look at like this so since it is only h plane characteristics so the outputs coming at port 1 and two are going to be equal in magnitude so what we can write is s41 is equal to s42 similarly s24 is equal to s13 so anything is fine and at the same time if we are giving the input at 4 and taking the output at 3 it is going to be equal to 0 because they are getting cancelled okay and if two of the equal magnitude of waves and um, in phase are fed to port 1 and 2 so that is what 1 and 2 so port 3 is going to be subtractive so the output is going to be zero and port 4 is going to be additive in nature it is going to add both the inputs so this is known as a sum arm as i told you in the beginning and port 3 is known as a difference arm now a wave fed at one or two will not appear in the other side that is when you give it at one the output at two is equal to zero similarly you give it at two the output coming at one is also equal to zero so s12 and s21 can be taken as zero finally a magic key can be matched but it can be matched by putting tuning screws it can be matched by putting tuning screws suitably in the e and h arms so uh, this 
magic tea can be tell, told that it is matched at port three and port four. So that is my port three, this port and the port four. I can have a matching. So what I can have is S3 three equal to S4 four is equal to zero. That, that I can get it as a conclusion. Now let us write the S matrix for the magic tea. Now, as it has got total four ports, so the S matrix that we are going to write for this magic T, the starting is going to be a four into um, a four into four S matrix. So let us write the S matrix and we will go step by step. So the S matrix is S11, S12, S13, S14. So um, S21, S22, S23 and S24. Uh, similarly, S31 and S32, S33 and S34 and S41, S42, S43 and S44. So we have four rows, four columns. Now let us change them according to whatever the property we discussed. So according to that, let us change them. Now, the first thing that we discussed is S12. Uh, okay. So S12 equal to S21 equal to zero. Now let us go back and make S12 and S21 are equal to zero. Okay, so let us make them uh, these two S12, S21. Uh, let us make that that is equal to zero. So this is going to be zero and this is going to be zero. Okay, what is the other property that we saw? S33, S44 are equal to zero. Fine. So let us come back and make this also equal to zero. S33 equal to S44 equal to zero. And what is the other property that we got? Here you can see S13 equal to minus S23. That is S23, I can change it to minus S13. And S43 is equal to zero. Similarly, S34 is also equal to zero. Now let us go back to the S matrix and change it. So S34 and S43 can be made to equal to zero. So this is equal to zero. This is also equal to zero. And the other property we got here is that S13 equal to minus S23. That is my S23 can be replaced as minus S13. So this one, I can replace it as minus S13, right? And then the other property we have got is here is S14 is equal to S41, S24, S42. So all these things can be changed to S14. So S14 is S14. Even this is also equal to S14. And where we have the S41, we can change it to S14. And S42 can also be, uh, uh, yeah, S24 can also be changed to S14. Okay. Now, what is the other property we have got here? S23 is equal to, um, we have got here S23 is equal to S32. Also, we can take uh, because of the E matrix, S23 can be taken as S32. So, taking that into consideration, we can change here also this one to S23. And similarly, this S31 can be changed to S1. Now, let us quickly write this S matrix, whatever we got the changes. So, S11, okay, S12 becomes 0. S13, let us write it as S13 and S14, or uh, initially, let us write S12 here, then afterwards we will change. So now let us not change. Finally, we will prove and we will change. So let us write 
S1 to here and then S21 also let us write then afterwards we will change S21 and S22 and S23 can be changed to minus S13 and S24 can be changed to S14. S31 can be changed to S13 and S32 can be changed to S23 and again S23 can be changed to minus S13. So here this S23 can be changed further to minus S13. So writing that we can write it is equal to minus S13 and S33 uh, is equal to 0 and um, S34 is equal to 0. Okay. And uh, again, S14, S41 can be written as S14. So let us write it as S14. S42 can again be written as S14. S43 is equal to 0. And S44 is equal to 0. Okay. Now further, let us go in minimizing this uh, equation. So let us apply the unitary property to this. So let us apply the unitary property to row one. Okay, that is the unitary property to row one, the unitary property of S parameters and to row two. So we can write from row one, the equation is S11 square plus S12 square plus we are taking for the same row is 1, 3 square plus is 1, 4 square is equal to 1. Similarly, applying unitary property to the second row. So here, one thing we can do is 1, 2 is equal to is 2, 1. So this is 2, 1, we can again write it as is 1, 2. Okay, we can write it as is 1, 2. So we can apply the unitary property to second row. So it is S12 square plus S22 square plus uh, minus S13 square. That goes to S13 square only. Uh, plus, because it's a modulus, S14 square is equal to one. I can take it as my equation one. I can take it as equation two. Now, what I can do, I can subtract my equation two from equation one. Okay, so if we subtract, all the like terms are getting cancelled. So S12, S12, S13, S13, S14, S14 are getting cancelled. So finally, we are getting is S11 square minus S22 square is equal to zero. So from this, we can come to conclusion that S11 modulus is equal to S22 modulus. Okay, we can come to conclusion that S11 modulus is equal to S22 modulus. Okay, now from the unitary property, we can apply the unitary property to row three and row four. So applying the unitary property to row three, we can have here S13 square. The row three, you can see it is S13 square plus S13 square equal to one. So let us write that. So we have from row three, S13 square plus S13 square is equal to one. So we can write two into S13 square is equal to one. So in that case, my S13 is going to be one by root two. Similarly, by applying unitary property to row four, uh, so uh, we'll go to row four, it is S14. We have only S14. So S14 square plus S14 square is equal to one according to unitary property. So we can put that also again. So applying unitary property to fourth row, we will get uh, S14 square, S14 square addition equal to one. So that is going again going to give us S14 is equal to one by root two. Okay, 
Now, let us go back to equation one that we have got. Uh, the to equation one where we have got S1 three square and S1 four square. So what we can write here is, so S1 one square plus S1 two square plus S1 three square is nothing but one by two plus one by two is equal to one. So uh, applying, taking this values in our equation one. So what we can write is um, S1 one one square plus S1 two square for S1 three square, we can write it as one by two plus S1 four square, we can write it as one by two is equal to one. So in that case, it is giving us that S1 one square plus is one two square is equal to um, one one getting cancelled is equal to zero, right? So what it gives us that from this, the conclusion we can come that is one one is equal to is one two is equal to zero. Now already we have proved that is one one is equal to is two two and S12 equal to S21. So finally, what we can write that, we can write here that the value of S11 is equal to S12 is equal to S21 equal to S22, all are equal to zero, okay? And the value of S13 equal to one by root two and the value of S, or rather I'll, let me tell, write it as modulus, S14 modulus is equal to one by root two. So substituting these values, finally the S matrix for one magic T can be written as S11, S12 equal to zero. And already we have written S13 and S14 which is equal to one by root two. Already we have proved it is equal to one by root two. Or let us first write this and then we will replace the values. So we will have S13 and S14. Similarly, S21 is equal to zero, S22 equal to zero. And already we have written S23, S, um, S23 and S24 are equal to zero. Now, similarly, the third row, we can write S13. So if you see here, we have already written S13 and minus S13. So same thing I'm going to write here. So S13 minus S31 and 0, 0. Coming to the fourth row, S14 and S14, we can replace those two values as it is. So it is equal to, we can write here, S14 and S14, and here it is 0, 0. Now here we have proved S13 equal to one by root two. So all these terms, we can write it as one by root two. So let us change these terms to one by root two. So, okay. So all these things are one by root two. We can change. So taking one by root two common, the final S matrix for one magic key can be written as 0, 0, 1, 1, okay, and, yeah, and 0, 0, and for, yeah, minus s1 p minus s1 4 so we should not write here zero so this these two terms are s1 3 one second yeah so second row it is s1 3 and s1 4 it is not zero so here it is s minus s1 3 so it it should be changed as one by root two and one by root two so this is minus one by root two this is not zero so here we can take one by root two common so it is minus one plus one and coming here it is uh, one and minus one zero zero and one yeah and it is again it is going to be um, 
here we have written it as S14. Okay, so we can write here it as uh, 1 by root 2. So taking common, it can be written as 1 here. Okay, and 0. So this is the final S matrix that we are going to do. Okay, these two terms are S23 and S24. Yeah, they should be equal to S13, S14. So it is 1 by 2. It was not good initially. I wrote it by so this is the way we are going to get the final S matrix for one magic key. The main application of magic key is it can be used in the receiver section for adding or subtracting the signal. Okay. So uh, that's all for today's class. And uh, we will meet soon to do some problems based on this, all these passive devices. Thank you.